हेलो फ्रेंड्स आज हम डिस्कस करेंगे एक क्वेश्चन जो आप ही में से किसी ने मुझे भेजा है और इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन है इसको डिस्कस कर लेते हैं क्वेश्चन कुछ इस तरीके से है अ हॉर्जोंटल डिस्क ऑफ रेडियस आर इज फ्री टू रोटेट अबाउट इट्स फिक्स वर्टिकल एक्सिस विदाउट एनी फ्रिक्शन दिस डिस्क हैज रेडियस आर एंड इट कैन रोटेट about this blue colored vertical axis there is no friction now the question says a cylindrical roller of radius r not this radius radius of this roller is basically r not a cylindrical roller of radius r not is rotating about its fixed horizontal axis this cylindrical thing is rotating about this fixed horizontal axis with some constant angular speed uh, the roller is pressed against the disc as shown now the disc is flat horizontal disc is not rotating initially and there is a roller which can rotate about its axis like this and the roller is pressed onto the disc like this it is pressed against the disc as shown the contact line is radius of the disc the contact of the roller uh, is along the radius of the disc as you can see the pressure applied by the roller on the disc is maintained constant throughout the contact line now the roller is held such that it exerts same pressure everywhere on this line the roller exerts same pressure everywhere on this particular contact line and then the question says the roller is made to rotate at a constant angular speed omega not mind you this is constant and this is not going to change about this horizontal axis what is the final steady angular speed acquired by the disc because there is friction between the disc and the roller therefore when the roller rotates uh, it causes the disc to rotate as well so the disc will begin to rotate about its vertical axis what will be final steady angular speed of the disc about the blue colored axis that is the question i am getting out of the your view so that you can uh, capture the question and give it a try on your own before looking at the solution and here i am doing the solution for all of you uh, i am getting a phone call okay i am not going to pick it <coughs> so here goes the solution i have drawn the top view of the disc right this white colored disc blue color ka ho gaya but uska upar se aap dekh rahe hain to ye circle dikh raha hai and according to the question the radius of this particular disc is r take let us assume that the contact line of the cylindrical roller and the disc is this particular white line this is the line along which the roller is in contact with the disc now what happens initially the roller roller is rotating about its horizontal axis with angular speed omega not so this contact point this contact point is obviously moving at a speed omega not r not where r not is the radius of this roller uh, this is actually the this section that i have drawn right this this section has radius r not and the contact point is obviously moving tangential to the disc and its speed will be omega not into r not because the question says that omega not is held constant by way of some mechanism by applying some torque etc this angular speed is not going to change so every point of the roller that is touching this disc the contact point that means the point of the roller which is touching the disc all the points will have this velocity omega not r if the roller is going like this then obviously the velocity will be directed this way 
uh, every contact point will have a velocity omega naught r in this direction. So, it is very obvious that if the disc is not rotating and the roller only is rotating, the contact point of the roller is rubbing against the disc. So, there is clear cut sliding between the roller and the disc and therefore, a kinetic friction force will act on the disc. This force is being applied by the rotating roller. So, the direction of friction force will also be like this assuming that uh, the contact point of roller is going in this direction. So, the friction force that will act on this uh, disc at various points on this line uh, can be represented like this. All these small small arrows are representing the local friction force acting on this radial line. So, obviously, if friction force acts like this everywhere on this radial line, it will produce a torque in this sense on the disc and therefore, the disc will begin to rotate. So, I hope all of you understand why the disc will rotate. So, the disc will rotate, but according to the question, please try to understand uh, as per our question, uh, this whole axis of the roller, the roller is kept fixed. I mean, uh, the roller is just rotating, uh, it is not going anywhere. Uh, that is the sense of the question right now. So, roller is not going anywhere uh, and because it is rotating, so every contact point is going inward and so it is exerting, it is applying a friction force on the disc and this friction force will cause the disc to uh, start rotating basically. <clears throat> now, initially in the beginning when the disc is not having any speed, the disc is not rotating. So, every contact point, every contact point uh, at every contact point there is slipping and therefore, the friction at every contact point is kinetic friction uh, and if we consider a small length of this line dx here and same small length dx here and same small length dx here on every segment of length dx, the amount of friction force acting on the disc will be same because the question says that the pressure that means you can call it as normal reaction. Normal reaction between the roller and the disc over this length dx and normal reaction between the roller and the disc over this length dx that is same, that is same everywhere. So, mu into n if you write it that way, the friction force on every dx length will be same along this line initially. But after some time when the disc has acquired some angular speed, what is happening? Then also most probably everywhere there is slipping and the same thing continues. The friction remains same everywhere and it acts in the same direction and therefore, there is torque and therefore, this angular speed goes up. But as the angular speed of the disc increases, as the angular speed of the disc increases, there will be a time when this particular point will attain a speed that is equal to this speed. That means, this contact point of the roller is moving with this speed and this is a point on the floor that is this is a point on the disc and this point also acquires the same speed omega naught r naught. In that case, at this particular point, this slipping will cease, there would not be any slipping because the uh, contact point of the roller as well as the disc both will be having matching speed, same speed and at that particular instant, there will be the kinetic friction that you understand uh, that will basically vanish, is not it, because uh, there is uh, no rubbing, there is no slipping. So, the kinetic friction just a sense ke liye, aapko ke liye bata raha hai, the kinetic friction force will vanish at this that particular point because the two contact points, the one point that is on the roller and the other point that is on the disc, they are going at same speed. I hope I am able to make you understand. So, uh, what is going to happen is initially in the beginning, the friction force is like this, but
but very soon we may see that there is uh, no friction acting here. Uh, there is no friction acting here, there is no friction acting here. But will this continue that these points will have no friction? No, actually uh, the angular speed goes on increasing, increasing and increasing. So actually it won't be like ki pe koi friction nahi hoga. Because the angular speed is increasing, so just a little bit time further, uh, what will happen? The point of the disc that is over here, over here, over here, uh, that will have a greater speed than the speed of the contact point of the roller. The roller contact point is moving at this fixed speed. But because of all these friction forces, torque produced by friction forces, omega goes on increasing for the disc and therefore uh, after this point uh, attains this speed immediately after that actually this point will have a speed higher than the speed of the roller contact point and therefore this point will be going at higher speed which means uh, the direction of friction will reverse the friction force acting on the disc will go in this direction because now the contact point of the roller is having a smaller speed and beneath that the disc, the contact point of the disc is having a higher speed. So naturally on this particular disc, the friction force at this particular point on the disc, the friction force will change its direction. I hope you all understand because with respect to the disc now this point is going in the opposite direction. So the direction of friction reverses. So at these points gradually the direction of friction will start reversing the reason being the reason being that now these points are having a speed which is greater than the speed of the contact point of the roller. So uh, after some time what we will see is at these points friction is acting this way and at all other points the friction is acting in same direction because these points will have a smaller speed for a given omega the speed of a point at a distance r is omega into r. So obviously uh, the point that is at the center of the disc it is not having any speed but as you move away from the center the speed of uh, all the points on the disc goes on increasing. So here the speed is much higher than omega naught r naught and therefore friction is acting in this direction whereas at all these points the speed is still lower than omega naught r naught and the friction is acting in the same direction. So uh, in a way this friction is having a higher torque in this diagram clockwise torque than these frictions which are in anti-clockwise direction. So still the angular speed is increasing. So if the angular speed keeps on increasing what is going to happen? the situation will translate to a situation like this where all these points are having a speed higher than a speed of the uh, contact point of the roller omega naught r naught. So these points are having already having a speed higher than omega naught r naught and therefore friction on all these points is acting in this direction whereas these points are still having a speed less than omega naught r naught and therefore friction on those points are acting in that direction. So I guess now you are getting some sense that after some time what is going to happen is uh, these friction forces will have a clockwise torque which is equal to counterclockwise torque produced by these friction forces. And when that situation arises that these torque and these torque balance one another, uh, there will be no more torque on the disc and its angular acceleration will cease, its angular acceleration will become 0 and thereafter the angular speed of the disc is not going to increase anymore. So this is the question basically and now uh, we can actually solve it. Uh, let us assume that this is the point, this is the point at a distance maybe r naught from the center uh, where the uh, speed of the contact point of the disc is same as the speed of the contact point of the roller. So at this particular point the speed speed of the contact point of the disc is omega naught r naught. So what I am saying is if at this point in time the angular speed, let us say this is the final angular speed, 
the situation has become steady angular speed of disk is no more changing so this omega into r naught is actually equal to omega naught r naught that means to the left to the right of this point this particular point the friction will be acting in this direction and to the left of this point the friction will be acting in the other direction so now this friction and this friction they must have equal and opposite torque that is what is being said so we just need to equate the torque due to this friction and this friction and uh, um, we need to calculate r not from that if you substitute that value of r not here you will get the right value of omega final value of omega that the disk will acquire so let us do that uh, because the question says that uh, friction is uh, the um, pressure exerted by the roller on the disk is uniform so on any dx length that you consider any dx length that you consider along this radial line the friction force will be same uh, just for the sake of simplicity i am saying that uh, friction force acting on unit length friction force acting on unit length of that line is lambda i am not writing it as f because f stands for force friction huh? so lambda is force per unit length so over this length the friction force will be lambda into r not lambda into r not and because the friction force over every dx length is same so for calculation of torque we need not integrate actually we can do that but it is not required it is good enough to assume that it is good enough to assume that uh, the friction force is exactly at the center of this line segment that means the effective friction uh, lambda r not is at a distance of r not by 2 from here and therefore uh, we can write this torque as this one you can do integration also by taking uh, an element of length dx at a distance x from the center write friction over it friction into x is the torque integrate from 0 to r not and you will get the value of torque it will be same as this one and this torque must be equal to torque produced by friction acting over this length so in similar fashion i can write the torque due to friction acting over here the friction force will be lambda times r minus uh, r minus what r minus r not <laughs> r minus r not right so uh, this length is r minus r naught and the friction force per meter length is this one so this is the friction force and we will assume that this friction is acting at the center of this line segment here so this length will be actually half of this length plus r naught so i can write it as r naught plus half of r minus r so this will make it r not square and 2 r not this will become r minus r not and here it will be r plus r not if i am not wrong 2 r not uh, uh, okay. 2 2 cancels out so this becomes r not square is equal to r square minus r not square so r not is r by root 2. so r not is r by root 2 that means at this distance from the center there will be a point uh, whose speed is actually exactly equal to omega naught r naught the speed of the contact point of the roller so just by substituting this value of r naught over here we get the final angular speed of the disc this is the angular speed of the disc when uh, the torques are balanced there is no torque actually so this omega is equal to omega naught r naught divided by this r naught which is r into root 2 so this is our final answer hope you have enjoyed this session and if really you have enjoyed please do not forget to like the video and please forward this video to at least one of your friends that will be helpful for me See you in the next video, goodbye till then.